Paul met Katie. They planned to move in together, but on the day of the move, she stood him up. Season eight, episode 32 of Catfish is a wild one. So get ready. This is a virtual episode, which I don't think we've covered yet. So that's kind of fun. That's kind of exciting for us. This episode actually begins with the fiance of the person who's potentially being catfished reaching out to the show on their behalf. So Samantha reached out to the show because 10 years ago, her fiance Paul was in a relationship at 16 years old with someone he met on Xbox named Katie. And the pair were together for about two years. Mm. We've been together for eight years and have three beautiful children. This man is about to be married. Okay, he has three whole children, three children with this woman, and he is still hung up on a girl on Xbox who didn't want him then and still doesn't want him now. Are you not in shame? Are you not embarrassed from that? At this point, I did not want to continue watching because this alone irritated the hell out of me, but I love y'all and this was highly requested, so we kept going. Paul randomly brought up his first love to Samantha. They planned to move in together, but when it was time for her to come and get him, she stood him up. She did not answer. So he just moved on with his life, apparently, allegedly, because I don't really think he moved on. Recently, Samantha caught Paul searching for Katie online. And he's scrolling through his Instagram and this lovely female pops up. Also, her name is spelled weird. It's Katie, like C-A-I. T E A, and he messaged her saying, like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Long time no talk. And she said that they never talked before. And then she blocked him because he can't find her profile anymore. But Samantha says that Paul cannot stop talking about KT. She's so sick of hearing about her. She just wants him to realize that he was catfished so they can fully move on. Me personally, if I was with someone and they kept talking about their first love, we don't need to be together anymore. Cause if you want her so bad, just go get her. I'm not about to be your second best. You can't have that one. So you want me instead? No. No ma'am. Cammy then says that Samantha sounds super confident in her man. You gotta watch your confidence when you're trying to hook your fiance up with potentially like the love of his life. I don't doubt for a second that if the girl is, is really who he thinks she is, that he would drop his family to be with her, considering that this is a decade later, 10 years later, he is still looking her up online, trying to find her, trying to reconnect behind his fiance's back. Samantha then hops on the Zoom call with Neve and Cammy, and she says that figuring this out is super important because the past has to be left in the past. She said that she herself is really curious to see if Katie is real. And she also wonders if she is who she says she is, would Paul regret not keeping in touch with her and pursuing things further and basically having the life that he has with Samantha, but if he would prefer to have that with Katie. And I think the answer is yes. That's my opinion! Samantha, she's a real one for this. She says that she's hoping it's a catfish. She does not want this person to be real because I think she also knows that if this person is real, then her family is not going to do super good. She said that Paul knows that she contacted catfish, but he does not know that, you know, this is happening right now. He's in the bedroom though, so she goes and gets him. <laughs> I couldn't imagine going and getting my man from the bedroom to help him get on the TV show Catfish to potentially meet the love of his life. Be fucking for real. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Samantha's a better woman than me, I guess. But as soon as they get into the camera, the first thing I thought is, you know when you see a couple and you're like, wow, they'll just look like you're meant to be together? That from you was Samantha and Paul. Paul says that the catfish is not at all affecting their relationship. And Sam's like, is he for real right now? Are, are we in the same relationship? Because it's definitely affecting us, right? Obviously it is. Otherwise we would not be on the show. Cammy then encourages Paul to reaffirm Samantha. Tell her how much you love her and how much you care about her. And he says, She pretty much already knows how I feel about her. And even Cammy are just like, Crickets, bitch, okay? Blink twice if you need help, Paul. Like, are you being held in this relationship against your will? Why would you not willingly want to express the love that you have for this person who you have three kids with and you say you want to marry? And then Samantha gives a little speech of the things that she was obviously hoping that he would say. I know he loves me and I know he cares about me and I know he wants to be with me. Cami asks, is this true? Like, do you actually feel this way? Paul says, yeah, I feel this way. We've been together eight years. I wouldn't have stuck around that long if I didn't feel this way. I just have to say this really quick. The length of a relationship does not indicate how much genuine love is shared between a couple. A lot of people stay in relationships, but they aren't madly in love. They're not even madly in like, they can't even stand to be around another, but then use the amount of time that they have been together as a way to flex on other people who are either not in relationships or in pretty new relationships. Being together for eight years doesn't matter if you are not the love of his life and he's waiting to reconnect with the love of his life. 
No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. As they get into the details of his relationship with Katie, Samantha then makes her exit. She does not want to hear any of this. So Paul was 16 at the time that they met. He was living in Michigan and Katie lived in Tampa, Florida. Now Floridians, I just have a question really quickly, okay? Why is Florida always caught up in some mess? What's going on with the people who live down there? But Paul and Katie, they met on Xbox, they were playing Call of Duty, they exchanged numbers and they quickly began talking every single day. At one point they even had a 32 hour long conversation. 32 what? Hours. what the hell are you talking about for 32 hours? Did y'all not sleep? You didn't eat? You didn't shower? You didn't go to the bathroom? You didn't lotion? You didn't brush your teeth? You don't have you don't have nowhere to be? 32 hours is insane. So he says that she was so sweet, she was so nice, she had a really good sense of humor, and they just clicked and they fell for each other. They fell head over heels in love. He says that he knew that he loved her right away. While they were in their two-year relationship, he was bullied quite heavily, so he actually ended up quitting school. He said that he was going through a very difficult time in life, and she was his emotional and somewhat financial support as well because she was sending him gifts. Miss Katie was a big baller. She was sending me Xboxes and iPods and video games. And it's like, how does another 16 year old have this type of money? I know something you don't. He said that she said that her parents died. Oh, mm. all right. So she had insurance money and that's why she was able to give him all of those gifts, which I guess at 16 years old, I, I probably would have. No, actually, I don't think at 16 years old, I would have believed that. But boy brain, I guess, is different. Cammy is then like. My pockets won't stay down. But if she has all these tech gadgets, she doesn't have a video camera for her computer. And he said that Katie always gave him excuses, but he just accepted those excuses because he loved her. You stupid. So he was actually supposed to move to Florida and live with Katie, but she never came to get him and they just stopped talking. She actually came back around. She circled the block about a year later, but he totally blew her off because she had blown him off. So he was like, I'm not doing this with you. But then about six months before he appeared on Catfish, he went looking for her on Instagram. He then said it's extremely unlikely that the Catfish is somebody else just because of the sheer amount of pictures that she sent and the types of pictures that she sent. So they're like, sir, what you mean the type of pictures that she sent? Full nude? Um, yeah. Like full nudes with her face in it. I, uh, okay. I feel like if you were getting explicit pictures like that from somebody it would be hard to accept that they're not really who they say that they are he says that 10 years later he'll still have random days where he thinks of her and he believes that this is causing a blockage in his relationship with sam even though earlier he said that they it's not causing them any problems but obviously you being in love with a woman instead of the woman that you're with is going to cause relationship problems in the current relationship that you're in with the woman you're supposed to be marrying the woman you have three kids with like duh paul hopped off the call and neve and cammy they're gonna get to work investigating but you know they have to do their little debrief their little gossip sesh immediately after hearing the whole story so cammy says plain as day that he is simply not over her he's literally in love with someone else then as an example of what she's saying cammy brings up how when she asked paul how he felt about sam like she knows how i feel about her but when we asked how he felt about katie he would not shut his big mouth about how much he loved her and all the great qualities that she possessed now this reminds me of a couple of TikToks I've seen where the creators are talking about how when men are ready to settle down, usually after losing the woman that they really wanted to be with, the woman of their dreams, the woman they claim they would have done anything for, they will usually just settle for whoever is around because they don't want to be alone. And at this point, that's what this relationship is giving and I don't like that for our girl Sam at all. Right away they get to investigating and Cammy says that Katie's a fake name. No one is named that. Nobody spells their name like that and that's what I said. Paul only has two pictures of her. They then reverse image search the first one and nothing comes back. But the second is linked to a Facebook page for Katie named K-A-T-Y, like a regular person, who has the same last name as the one that Paul sent them. And they go to her profile and it, there's a wedding picture. Homegirl is married. So Neve sends her a message. Hey Katie, wondering if you had two minutes to help clear something up. So Katie is a real person, but the question is, is she the person that Paul was in the relationship with 10 years ago? I'm getting more mad the more I think about it. There has to be some sort of connection to her since nudes were exchanged and that's the face that was in the nudes. 
They search the full name that Paul gave them and they come across a Reddit thread called Katie Blank, because they didn't say the last name because it's Katie's real last name, is a catfish. With a link to Katie, like K-A-T-Y, the regular Katie's Facebook page. Then Neve gets a call from Katie, K-A-T-Y, Katie. Neve gives her a rundown of the situation. She tells them, I did used to play Xbox, but I never had a relationship with anybody. And she never talked to anyone named Paul. She isn't surprised though that Catfish is reaching out to her because she said that she has had guys reach out to her in the past. Like she's fully aware that someone is using her pictures to catfish. They ask her about the nudes and she says that she can't imagine the person who had access to them would share them, but she's at work so she has to go. Immediately after the call ends, she sends a video proving that it's her that they spoke to. Hi, my name is Katie, and I never talked to a guy named Paul on Xbox. Paul and Samantha then come back on the Zoom. They just give them the rundown. They tell them what they found. And Paul seems really disappointed that Katie is married and that he has been catfished. Sam seems happy that the woman is married and her man has in fact been catfished. So now her man won't run off into the sunset with another woman, at least not this woman. If your partner will run off with somebody who is not you and happily leave you in the dust, that person was never your partner to begin with. They're simply using you as a placeholder until someone who they really want comes around, then they're gonna throw you to the wayside. If someone ever makes you feel this way, leave them. <laughs> I'm being an asshole at this point. Really, I'm not, because that's what I would do. But honestly, it was just so weird to see this man experience heartbreak in front of his partner, the woman who's supposed to be the love of his life, the mother of his children. They then show the pair the video. Not her voice, definitely not her voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. Neve then says that the fact that it's a different voice confirms that the girl in the pictures, Katie, K-A-T-Y, is not the same girl that he was talking to, that he was in love with. They have absolutely no idea who the person could be because there's no paper trail to them, but they know who it's not, and it's not K-A-T-Y. It's not regular Katie. Neve then asks Sam to leave so they can talk to Paul about everything, kind of with her around, because he's going to be more honest that way. Paul says that he is pissed, okay? He's really mad, but he also feels like shit. He said he needs to know who it is and why they did this. I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean, this is, it's honestly embarrassing. It's embarrassing and degrading. Sir, how do you think your woman feels about all this? Like, how do you think Sam feels about all of this? Do you not think she also feels embarrassed and degraded that she had to write into the show Catfish for her man? They decide to call it a night and they say that they will check in with Paul in the morning. So the next morning, Neve tells Paul and Cammy that he reached out to Katie to ask her if she knows anything else. Katie then texts Neve back and says, have you figured anything out yet? That's an odd question. Katie then asks for the Zoom link and she pops onto the screen literally right away. We're missing Hello. someone. She's not here yet. And then she walks off the screen and says that she'll be right back. Girl, 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 girl. Oh. Anxiety is through the roof at this point because where did you go? Who are you getting? What is happening? Someone else then pops up into the Zoom and it's a significantly older lady. Katie then introduces herself, which we already know her, and she goes, and this is Martha. Well, I'm delighted to meet you and that you're joining us. I have just- uh But why are you here? <laughs> he said, girl, it's so nice to meet you, random lady, but who are you and how do you fit in here? What's going on? So Katie says that she has no idea who Paul is, but Martha is her mother and Martha knows who Paul is because Martha has been the one talking to Paul. Wow. There are so many layers to the madness going on here. And as everyone is digesting this information, silence. Paul then asks her, like, you realize how young I was, right? She says, I do. Martha, what? You were in your 40s pursuing relationships with teenage boys. Martha and Isaac are two elite members of the Catfish Club that I swear have first class tickets right to a special part of hell. Katie then says that she found out about everything her mother's activities about two years ago and that Martha had been doing it for a while and she had countless victims. Katie says that she was really mad. I was so mad and hurt. But they've now reconciled and they're on good terms. Let me let me tell you this right now. 
Katie is way better than me because I personally would have cut my mom off with the quickness. It's like you don't exist to me. If I found out that one, she's a predator and she likes going after young teenage boys, and two, if she was using my pictures, my likeness, my name, and my nudes to prey on minors. The only thing that I would be reconciling if I were Katie is my foot up Martha's ass. Cause what are you talking about? Martha then takes a tissue and blots a tear when there's not a tear in sight. Neve then asks her when she last used Katie as a means of catfishing people. Seven years ago? I don't remember exactly, Neve. You can't remember? That's suspicious. She says that she went and saw a therapist, so her stuff has been worked out years ago. Also, there was no mention of whether Paul sent her explicit photos, but I'd imagine that he was also sending them because Katie was sending them, and that's usually how that type of thing works. It's very rare for just one side to be sending the nudies. Cammie then says that there's absolutely no justification for her talking to a young teenage boy at her big grown age, but she should try and explain herself anyways. So she says that she started catfishing because she had just gotten divorced. My mom died. Her oldest child went off to college. And Katie left to live with a boyfriend. And I was extremely lonely. And she says that she is not making excuses for her behavior. It was not right, but she just wanted someone to care about her. So why don't you get a dog? Or like a cat? But everything she listed off as the reason or explanation for why she did it, it just sounds like a bunch of excuses even though she said they're not excuses. That's what it sounds like to me. Women experience immense grief all of the time and they also experience empty nest syndrome and often at the same time. But they then don't go and use their teenage daughter's likeness and nudes to trick teenage boys into being in a relationship with them and also grooming them by buying them gifts. Disgusting. Then Martha starts crying about how lonely she was at the time, as if she's the victim in all of this. I just need Martha to suck her fake tears back up into her eyeballs and save them for somebody who cares, because I don't care about you crying. You did this. You prayed on him. Why should I feel bad for you? Yes, grief is a really hard thing to experience. Divorce is a really hard thing to experience. Empty nest syndrome is super hard. All of those things are really difficult because as women, we've been taught that our inherent worth and our inherent value is wrapped up in being able to keep a home and, able, and having those people around you that care about you so much because you spend all your time caring about them and pouring into them and raising them and lifting them up. But that still doesn't justify what the fuck you did. Paul then eats her up. Make a friend, not a boyfriend. I mean, don't take advantage of a goddamn teenager like what the f Neve is then like but you used pictures and your daughter's name why wouldn't you at least change the name or use other pictures so it wouldn't be tied back to your daughter who had nothing to do with this mess Neve basically asks her why were you not a better catfish I was not savvy enough to even think that what I was doing was wrong and she wasn't savvy enough to steal someone else's identity but if you stole it from your daughter then you could do it from somebody else not saying that she should have, but the fact that she picked her daughter is crazy. So she said that she wasn't savvy enough, but then she also tells Cammy a little bit later on that she used her daughter's pictures specifically because she knew she would always have access to them and a way to get more pictures as a way to keep the deception up and make sure the relationships lasted as long as possible. I personally, and this is just my opinion here, I think that she was resentful towards Katie for leaving and for being young and hot and fresh. That's what I think. It sounds like Katie is the youngest and she wasn't college aged, so she wasn't really at the time where Martha was expecting her to leave home, but she decided to leave home anyways, and she essentially left Martha completely alone. So I think that her stealing Katie's identity and stealing her photos and all of these things was her way of getting her lick back with also getting her needs met. I think that it was more malicious than she's letting on, but because she's a woman and she's crying, I'm just supposed to feel bad for her. I don't feel bad for you. Cammy says that she completely understands being lonely, experiencing loneliness and wanting connection and community. She understands getting on Xbox to talk to people. But it should have ended there. Taking the relationship elsewhere with a high schooler is wrong. It's wildly inappropriate. Cammy says that she thinks the age of consent in Michigan is 16, but as a 40 something year old woman, what do you even have in common with a 16 year old boy? And I just wanna point out that legality does not equal morality. I don't care what the legal age of consent is. You should not be in any sort of romantic predatory relationship with a minor when you are 40 something years old. That's creepy. But Martha keeps crying her fake tears because I do not actually see a single tear fall at all throughout this entire episode. 
She says that those guys were the ones showing her the most amount of attention and affection and that's what she wanted so she kept going after that age group. Cammy says, sure. A 16 year old boy is going to shower you with attention and affection when you're sending them naked pictures of your teenage your daughter. daughter. It's a 16 year old boy. Be fucking for real is what Cammy said. Katie says that she was 18 at the time the pictures were taken, but I don't know if I really believe that. It seems like she doesn't want her mom to get a lot of backlash on this. So I could see her covering for her mom. So when they ask her how she even got the nude pictures, Martha says that she got them by stealing Katie's phone when she was sleeping. She's a fucking worse. She would look for new or different photos to send herself to use to keep up the act. And then I would delete the sending off of her phone. So she was savvy enough to do this, but she was not savvy enough to realize that what she was doing was wrong. You don't find that suspicious. Two plus two is making five in this situation. Something is not adding up here. I feel like she's lying because she is. Katie said that two years ago when she initially found out she was pissed. She felt violated. She felt so used and betrayed and it made her think that they would never be able to get past it. She said that knowing everything her mom has been through, understanding her perspective made it a lot easier to forgive her. So they've been able to move on. I said it before and I'll say it again. Katie is a real angel. And Martha really lucked out having her as a daughter because many of us would not be so understanding nor so forgiving. Paul, he's speechless, but he's also really enraged. He just keeps reiterating how messed up this whole situation is. He tells Martha that she really messed him up. She gave him trust issues because that was his first relationship and she just abandoned him. She was his first girlfriend, so then he viewed every single woman just like her afterwards, treated them all as if they were the ones who had caused him that initial pain, that initial harm. Martha then says that she's really sorry. I really am. Like, honestly, lady, like, tell it to somebody who cares, because we do not care. She then keeps crying without tears, and I'm so sick of it. She says that she struggled to stop catfishing, and she couldn't figure out how to get out of it. Which, again, you are making yourself the victim when you are the perpetrator. You did this. You're acting like somebody forced you to do this. Paul then steps out. He goes to discuss everything with Sam. Cammie asks if Katie is okay. And I love Cammie for checking in on Katie because, yeah, this is really hard on Paul, but this has also got to be really hard on her. Her mom violated her. That's your mom. Katie says that she has mixed emotions. She says that at the time, she does remember her mom taking a lot of pictures of her, which was out of the normal. And now she knows that her mom wasn't taking those pictures to have and to hold. She was taking them so that she could catfish. And she is crying at this point. Like She has legitimate tears coming down her face, something her musty mama did not have. Cammy then looks at Martha and she goes, you know, the fact that your daughter is here for you is incredible. Martha apologizes once again, and she says that she doesn't want to do anything like this again to hurt her daughter or anyone else. Cammy then reiterates how messed up her actions are. Martha says that she came on the show because she wanted to come clean and because she loves her daughter. I don't ever want to do anything like that again. Which again, she's making it all about her and not about the people she hurt. And I don't like that, because I feel like that's how you got into the situation in the first place, only thinking about you. Once Martha and Katie leave, Neve says that people always ask like, What's the craziest, weirdest thing that you've seen on your show? And this might be the new answer for that. And that's saying a lot, because we've seen a lot of craziness. Check out this playlist to watch more craziness. Paul and Sam then come back on screen. Paul says that he is disgusted. He says that he didn't want to disrespect Martha too much in front of her daughter, because that's also degrading to Katie, and she didn't do anything wrong. And I thought that was really considerate of him, despite being the victim in all of this. So I really appreciated that. He says that he and Sam are going to get married and just live their lives. Paul then turns to Sam and he apologizes for everything that he's put her through. I'll be very honest with you and I'm really sorry that everything I ever put you through. I wish I could treat you better. She just hugs him and tells him it's okay. I feel like this should have been such a sweet moment, but I don't see it as such a sweet moment. I just have a not great feeling about this, about his sudden expression of how much he loves and cares for her now when he's hurt and found out that he's been lied to when at the beginning of the episode he wouldn't even tell her that he loved her to her face in front of everybody but if sam likes it i love it for her and for her alone in the little follow-up we find out that paul is focused on his family and he is planning their wedding and katie says that she she feels like a weight is lifted now that this has been discussed publicly Martha says that she's glad she confronted her past on the show in hopes that others she affected can get closure from her apology. She is also still in therapy to deal with her past, so this doesn't happen again. And again, she made it all, all about herself. 
I feel like the recent things that have come out with Jonah Hill uh, specifically, it just shows that somebody can be in therapy and still not be a good person and still not actually working through their issues. So while I'm happy she's in therapy, I d it doesn't mean that she's not doing this still. Like, we're just supposed to take her word for it. I just feel like I wouldn't trust that woman as far as I could throw her. And I'm a little girl. I'm 5'1", so I don't think I could throw her that far. To me, Martha and Isaac, two peas in a pod. They're locked in. They're besties, basically, in the predatory world of catfish. If anything, I'd say Martha is worse in certain ways because she catfished as her daughter and stole her nudes and sent them to a bunch of random people. But she was remorseful, kind of, at the end. But her apologies were completely revolved around herself rather than those who fell victim to her. Whereas Isaac did not apologize, he didn't express any sort of remorse, he didn't feel bad at all. But I also had trouble believing that Martha's remorse was genuine. To me, I see both as being predatory groomers for sure. But I personally cannot help but think that if Martha was a man who had done this to his daughter, Cammy and Neve would have reacted more harshly. To me, it 100% came off like they weren't trying to grill her as hard because she's a woman, she's emotionally sensitive, her mom died, she got a divorce, her kids left the house and she was crying. None of that matters. A predator is a predator is a predator. And I feel like they went really light on her just because she was a woman and those white woman tears really be getting to people. This episode was a crazy one. Thank you so much to everybody who recommended that I watch this episode. And if y'all want to see me cover a specific episode make sure to leave it in the comments let me know your thoughts your feelings your opinions i'd love to hear them let's have some discussion in the comments because i i have a lot of thoughts about this and as always i thank you so much for watching if you like the video make sure to like the video make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know the next time i post a catfish video or other videos because i also talk about true crime talk about black history in addition to reality tv thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video